Hi, this is going to be another video for my GCSE Electronics students. We're going to start with a quick demonstration of what we can do with this 4 ohm speaker being driven by Genio 8, which is driving the uh, MOSFET here. OK, I'm going to put my hand over it because my kids have gone to bed and it is quite loud. Still can be plenty loud enough, believe me. I'm just going to run this once. And notice the LED in just a moment. probably noticed that LED wasn't uh, exactly constantly on and this is one of the problems with this circuit it places quite high power demands on the three AA batteries that I've got running this so if you make the circuit do make sure that you include this bulk capacitor between the power rails if we omit that as I'm going to do now and then try to run the circuit it doesn't run correctly the voltage is going to dip too much so do make sure that you include that bulk capacitor. Uh, I've used 1000 microfarads, other values will do, but 1000 seems to work quite well on this. GCSE students note you don't need to do any calculations for that. Okay, so let's just now have a quick look at the circuit, then I'll show you about how to get it programmed. So what have we got here? Well, if you look at this circuit design here, I've got the programming circuitry, which you don't necessarily have to uh, include in your circuit, because you could always use one of these just to program your microcontroller. Take the chip out and then put it in your breadboard. I rather like being able to program in the breadboard because I've made this little board up. Let me just show you that now what I can do. I can just plug in the Genie programming cable there. And then I can program the chip without taking it out. And on that little board there, all I've included is this. It's, they call it a download socket. It's not really a download socket. It's just one of these audio sockets. And then two resistors. If you didn't want to program your Genie microcontroller in circuit, you could, if you wanted, just get rid of those things. OK, you don't need them. Probably want to include a 10K resistor from the programming pin down to ground, though. Otherwise, sometimes it can be quite slow uh, for the microcontroller to start up. Got a 100K resistor, and that's this 100K resistor, which effectively is going between the programming pin and zero volts. OK, remember, these are a common ground here. And then I've got a 22K resistor, which is like end on, so it's a little bit difficult to see. And that's the one that goes to pin 2, the programming pin. Apart from that, uh, I've got some male header pins there, so the my programming board can be placed directly into the breadboard. I've also got the LED, which just shows me when my power rails are on. Also, I've got the current empty resistor for the LED. The flowchart is super simple on this, it doesn't do anything I can just play tune okay and it plays it once and then stops if you want to get tunes like this let's just just go along here you can find the tune command somewhere uh, there we go okay you just drag it in like so and then if you double click it then you can choose a tune from one of these okay uh, you can also import okay now if you import you can import a file let's just get this out of the way and you can import RTTL files, those are the ones which I find easiest to get or have done in the past. And if you want, you can just go online and you can also search for those. So I found some, some Nokia ringtones, and on this website, let's just get this completely out of the way, that there are lots of these files and you can download these files so you could, uh, where, there we go, save the link as so you could actually save that file. Now, if you want, you can open. A file like that and then if you select that text and do a control C to copy what then happens is in circuit wizard it then changes the import into paste so if you paste then it gives you that file okay I have no idea what that one actually is let's just delete that so this time um, well let's go back see if we can find something that might look interesting to us I have no idea about these, so let's just take one at random and I'm just going to copy that and then go into Circuit Wizard, paste. So there we are. Uh, you have to specify which of the outputs you want to play to. Now, at the moment, uh, we haven't got G2. Now, let's just quickly go back. You'll see that my gate of the MOSFET is connected to G2. It's currently not available because we need to just configure this. So go to program settings and just make sure that G2 is an output. But previously it was an input. OK, and then we just click on OK. And now when we go back to the flowchart, it should be possible to say that we want the sound to be on G2. Right. OK, so let's just click on OK. And what we can do now is we can go on to program. Now the 
let's just bring the webcam back in the cable is connected if I turn my circuit on then it says the microcontroller is connected and then we can do various things actually let's just quickly go on to control now remember it was on G2 oh let's just go for our outputs here so we can now use G2 if I was to actually program G2 to be a logic high you'll hear it click if you listen carefully okay notice the dimming of the LED something that I mentioned earlier these batteries uh, alkaline batteries they can't pro really provide enough current for this so the voltage is going to dip and let's this time now run our program live I'm probably going to have to put my hand on top of the speaker because I don't want it to be too loud it's going to download the program and then it's going to run it I just click cancel because I don't know how long that goes on for okay but as you can see that, that was programmed it's as easy as that hopefully that's given you a few ideas of how to, how to get started and if you want to see some details about how to do the calculations for the output power I can post that in a follow-up video okay thanks very much for watching